In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the truth about heat pumps and what you should know that you might find surprising. And at the end of this video, I'm going to be talking about these specific types of heat pumps that we recommend and some of the laws and policies that have passed recently and what the actual effect of these laws will be on both the environment, the electrical grid, and how it will affect you. And you might be surprised with what you find out because it's probably not what you think. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel and smash that like button if you haven't done so already. So first off, if you're tuning in for the first time or watching this video, you're either just curious or probably in the market for a heat pump. Now, depending on what part of the country you are in, you may or may not already have a heat pump installed in your home and not even know it. So let's start with the basics. What is a heat pump? Simply put, a heat pump is simply an air conditioner with a reversing valve. And to break down what that means for you, let's start by explaining briefly how air conditioning works, and then you'll understand what a heat pump does. Now, most people think that air conditioning is just cold air coming out of their vents in the house. And although you would be correct, what's actually happening is it is not blowing cold air, but rather your air conditioner is absorbing heat. And the way this works is that you have two components to your air conditioner. One is the indoor coil or the evaporator coil on the indoor unit. And the other is the outdoor unit, which is called the condenser. And that is the big box that sits outside and is what people think of when they think of the air conditioner. Now, what actually happens when an air conditioner is running is that it is pumping refrigerant through a closed loop circuit that is sending refrigerant to the inside unit to absorb heat in the home. And after the refrigerant absorbs heat, it gets sent back out to the condenser to remove the heat from the refrigerant. And the technical way of describing this is called thermodynamic. And what it stands for is heat transfer by state change. As the refrigerant reaches the indoor evaporator coil, it boils and after boiling the vapor refrigerant, it goes outside to your condenser where it is condensed back down to a liquid refrigerant, which is why that unit is called the condenser. Now, the reason I point this out is that once you understand this, it is very easy to understand a heat pump because all that is happening is the flow is reversed where it is taking heat from outside the home in the refrigerant to the indoor coil and rejecting the heat inside the home and therefore reversing the cycle. Now, heat pumps are not a new technology, but they are gaining a lot of momentum recently because of the decarbonization movement and all sorts of tax rebates and tax credits that are available for putting in energy efficient appliances like a heat pump, water heaters, and heat pumps that use electricity instead of natural gas. And the question you might be asking yourself is, is this actually better? And is this going to save money? And is this going to save the environment? And the short answer is sort of, maybe, kind of, not really, and it depends. And that's what we're going to cover in the rest of this video. Now, one of the things I wanna point out first is that not all heat pumps are created equal. Just because you are putting a heat pump in your home does not mean that it is more efficient than running a furnace. In fact, it is normally the opposite unless you get a high efficiency heat pump. Now, I will explain the differences between a high efficiency heat pump and a standard heat pump or single stage or two stage heat pump, for example, which is a standard type of heat pump. And the truth about most basic single stage heat pumps is that they are fine for places with moderate winters, for example, places like Phoenix or Southern California, but in places like Colorado or colder, snowier climates with much colder winters, getting a higher efficiency heat pump is a much better option than a basic heat pump. And that is because a single stage heat pump is going to consume more electricity than its natural gas furnace equivalent would consume for the same needed heat output. And they're typically not as effective in very cold weather when compared to an inverter driven heat pump. Now, what I just said is only partially true because it is more of a generalization that most cold weather markets like Denver tend to have much cheaper natural gas prices when compared to electricity. So you really have to check the local cost in your area, but there are lots of instances where a heat pump makes sense depending on your specific circumstances, goals, financial position, and how long you plan to stay in the home. So let's start off with the first point, and that's dollars. Does it make financial sense 
to own a heat pump. Now, depending on your market, and this is very market specific, electricity may be cheaper than natural gas, but generally speaking in most markets, it is going to be cheaper to run a gas furnace, even in modest climates like Phoenix, where it doesn't get very cold in the winter. The difference between running a natural gas furnace or running a heat pump in these markets is probably a wash and not much of a noticeable difference from a financial perspective. So when does it make financial sense to buy a heat pump or run a heat pump? Now, the number one time it makes sense to run a heat pump instead of a natural gas furnace is if you are on solar. And the reason is, is because if you are on a solar system and it is sized properly to account for the load from your heat pump, then you can literally heat and cool your home for free. And also, if you happen to be a tree hugger, this is an instance where you are also heating and cooling your home with a relatively low carbon footprint. Now, the exception to this is if by chance your unit springs a leak and the refrigerant leaks into the atmosphere, which happens more often than you may think. In that case, it is honestly close to a wash in terms of its environmental impact, but from a financial cost perspective, you will still have less of an impact on the grid and on your pocket because of the fact that you are using the sun to heat and cool your home. The second part or addendum to this is if you are in the market to replace your HVAC system anyways, and the price difference between a heat pump and the air conditioner is not much different, then it might be worth upgrading to a heat pump at that time. The other thing to consider is that some municipalities might have large incentives for installing a heat pump under the guise of it being better for the environment and or decarbonization. And if you want to know the truth about this, we have another video that will be linked at the end of this video that answers this question and explains some of the problems with the current AHRI writing system that can sometimes be counterproductive to what the rebates that a city or county might be offering for installing a heat pump. I go into this further in that video, so I'm not going to touch on it here. However, I will touch on efficiency of heat pumps and which one you should consider. So when we talk about high efficiency heat pumps, which one should you buy? Now, you've probably heard of two stage or three stage or inverter heat pumps and variable speed heat pumps and find yourself wondering, okay, what's the difference in which one should I buy? The short answer is that it depends on what your goals are and also the climate you live in and your specific circumstances. My personal favorites are Daikin's VRV Life as well as Fujitsu's and Mitsubishi's VRF technology. And I love these because they are extremely efficient inverter driven equipment. And in addition to being efficient to operate are also extremely quiet and actually consume less power and therefore puts less stress on the grid. And on that note, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the marketing and political pressure that is driving decarbonization. And I'm going to give you the actual facts on how decarbonization actually affects the way things function. Now, if you are from California, you probably remember the headlines of California passing a law that all vehicles will have to be electric by 2035. And then in the middle of summer, a few months later, telling people not to plug in their electric vehicle because of rolling brownouts and blackouts. And this is a prime example of well-intentioned policymaking gone wrong. In the long run, decarbonization definitely makes sense because we will have clearer skies, less smog, and better air quality. So from a health perspective, it is better for everyone, including the environment, unless you're, of course, you're a tree, because ironically, trees love carbon. But what I mean by policymaking gone wrong is that although decarbonization and or running a heat pump makes sense in the long run, the problem is that if every single person with a home puts in a heat pump, but they don't put in a high efficiency heat pump, then the effect is actually counterproductive because what happens in this instance is that you have a bunch of very inefficient appliances taxing the electrical grid, which then causes even more of these rolling brownouts and blackouts. And if you're wondering how this is measured, I'll explain it using the examples of heat pumps I mentioned earlier. Now let's compare a basic 14 sear heat pump to a Daikin VRV Life and just using one metric called amp draw, we will spell out the problem and difference between the two types of systems. Inverters like the Daikin Fit or VRV Life pull an extremely low amount of power on startup. And even when they're running, this power draw is something that can be measured with a device that's called an amp clamp. And the unit of measure that measurement that we are measuring is called amps. Now, a Daikin VRV Life barely pulls two to three amps when it is starting up, which is extremely low. This is less current than a single space heater draws when it starts up. Now, 
How much does a 14 sear five ton heat pump pull? You might be asking, great question. And the answer is that on startup, a five ton 14 sear heat pump will pull an average of 25 to 35 amps, which is literally over 10 times what a VRV life or similar inverter heat pump pulls when it first turns on. And if you speak Spanish, I know what you're thinking. That sounds no bueno to me. So if you're having second thoughts about heat pumps, before you jump to any conclusion, there is a way to have the best of both worlds, and that is through a dual fuel setup, which I'll discuss shortly. So in summary, a heat pump is a great option, and if you can afford a inverter-driven heat pump and have solar panels on your house that offsets 100% of your usage, it's an absolute no-brainer. But if you're still on the fence, watch this next video where we discuss something you may or may not been aware have ever existed, and that's a dual fuel system. And this type of system is a combination of a furnace and a heat pump built into one. So to stay up to date on the latest trends in HVAC and how to get the best HVAC for your home, Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and watch this next video.